Can you see how that will be done? Are we set? All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'd like to be uh, the Washington County uh, Public Works Committee. The month of it's still March. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, motion to accept the minutes from our February 27th meeting. Motion for a second. Cassie. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Department reports, public works. Yeah. The floor is yours. Hi. Um, so we have been, we were going to go off screen for a second because Terry has a meeting to go to. Oh, we want to do that first? Is that okay? It is. So. I would say that's other business. Not off script. Other business. We're other business. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> We have been looking at a software program for DPW for a number of years now, and we believe that we've found the program that is the best fit for our department. Um, we put money into IT for it, but we didn't put enough money into IT for it. So we wanted to talk about it. Well, there's a couple of options on the table. First of all, step back on the software. It's kind of like a program management software. So it allows DPW to track a lot of things, right? Uh, put people's hours into projects. So at the end of the year, you want to know how, how much something costs in terms of hours, you know, for our employees and all that. It will give us that answer. More efficient. More efficient. Because we do that now. Okay. It's just much more efficient. Uh, as well as some more capability that devs looking for uh, to get there. Uh, the current software we have, uh, we want to let that sunset and uh, not renew it. Transition to new software, so there's some cost savings there initially up front to go towards this software. So this is a um, about 30 hours worth of staff work evaluating software packages up to this point. Um, seems to be the best fit for the need. Uh, is it the cheapest? Don't know. Haven't evaluated everything out there. Kind of it's. Uh, uh, I would I would use the phrase. Uh, uh, what's the book? The policy. I'm sorry. Senior moment. Best value. Best value. Thank you. <laughs> kind of a best value yeah. fit for the department. Um, so with that, there's a couple of options. Um, one option is you write out the year and budget for next year. Not ideal. The other option is we look at transitioning from the current software into the new software this year, there's some unknown. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a cost, but it's not budgeted completely for. There could be savings in other programs um, that will allow us to pay for it, but we won't know towards um, until we get closer to the end of the year. Don't overstate that. So uh, savings from the debt, the current uh, software comes to about 14,000. We transition out of that, don't renew it this year. Um, we budgeted for 20. This new one costs 40 to implement yep. first year. Uh, sustaining after is 32. 33. 33 every year sustained after, that'll be in the budget obviously. So <laughs> for Delta is 20, you could have 14K savings that we commit to this off our current software package yep. and there's potential there's even more savings wow. out there potentially from the IT budget but we wouldn't know until a little bit later on so the bogey is 6k right now uh, and we're hoping to find not hoping but we think we could find right. could we dig into contingency for that yes yeah, possible so that's kind of where we are with the software package. Yes, sir. Chairman, when you say 33,300 or 33,000? 33,000. A year. Sustained. Just sustainable. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. What does the one that we're doing now sustain for a year? So, Terry can kind of talk about that because there's two different programs going on here. There's the program that we have, want to put into our office, and there's TMT. And TMT runs out at the end of this year, so we have to either replace it or upgrade it. And that is going to cost $15,000. So there's that. 
There's also the Road AI program that we are not going to renew because it doesn't necessarily, it, this new program does most of what that was. Does that answer it? No. Oh, I can add a little bit to that. Sure. So, um, so we have, we have their, from an IT perspective, the software, they don't really have a software package right now that does everything that this software package will do for them. It'll really allow them to fully manage their department, centralize everything back. There's a couple components that go in the road AI that Deb mentioned, that she has a little bit of savings from by not renewing this year. But then we have an application um, for fleet management that they're doing right now that is really, really end of life. And we've been kind of waiting to renew it. We either have to upgrade it or replace it. And with the search for some other software, we were hopeful we could get something all in one so that it would be one single pane of glass for her to be able to manage the entire department. And we believe that we found that. Her team's very happy with the software itself. Um, it's a good application. There's other counties that are currently using it and happy with it as well. And uh, if we move forward with this software, we will not have to replace the TMT software next year to be able to do the upgrade. So I believe um, budget-wise, as we mentioned, we, she does have the 14 for the road AI. We could transfer that to the IT budget to go towards it if you'd like to. I do have some, I believe, will be breakage from some other savings I've been able to do. At the very end of the year, I initiated some contracts that saved us 50% on a couple of other purchases that I believe will cover the rest. So it's it's up to you folks whether you know you'd like to transfer money now. I, I think I can cover the rest um, with some of the savings I've been able to get so far from the IT perspective. I don't know if that helps at all or answers. Any other questions? Just curious. the workers think this is something more to keep an eye on them? Are they happy with it? Does the union, what's the union say about it? It's nothing new. It's it's not um, it's not anything new. So right now the uh, foremen have a fill out a sheet and it gets, it's actually digital now. Um, we used to send it in, but they digitally fill out a sheet that at um, allots all of the hours, all of the machines, all of the material, it's to keep track of everything. And then when it comes into the office, um, one of the office staff has to allocate that to each one of the projects. Because at the end of the year, we need to know how much we spent on each project for chips reimbursement and for like end of the year reports that um, Sue does for the bridges and other assets that we have. So we're doing all this now, it's not anything new. And the TMT is the same thing. Um, it's a similar thing where asset management, where when we put stuff into the computer, when we work on a truck, then we'll, we know what has been done on that truck. It's also got a much better asset tracking um, for when we do our purchases in the shop, the store room. So we buy a muffler or an oil filter or all that stuff. It's got better tracking. So that will help when we do our end of the inventory for Alan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I need to have you clear my mind up. The new program costs forty thousand. Yes. Right? What what it's replacing, what's the annual cost of that? Because you said it was going to replace two different parts or two different parts. I'm right. just curious about the different. Yep. So right now, the office programs that we use, where they send the stuff in and then we reallocate it with man hours, that doesn't cost us anything because that is IT focus. The um, savings is the TMT. So TMT is that program that was purchased before I started that's over in the shop. That has um, ends this year, and the upgrade cost, I believe, was in turn about fifteen thousand dollars. But we haven't minimum. Yes, a minimum of fifteen thousand dollars. So it's going to cost fifteen thousand dollars to upgrade that. Plus, we spend fourteen thousand dollars on our Road AI software that this incorporates. So let's. Third. When you upgrade for fifteen thousand, is that a one-time cost or is that an annual cost? No, you still have your. So the 15 is a, is a minimum cost. 
for the upgrade of the software. And then you'll have the labor that goes into that from the vendor to be able to upgrade. And then a lot of IT labor because we have to build out new servers and then all of her staff will have to be retrained because the version of the software that's out there now is very, very old and it'll be moving to a web-based model. So it's it's just like going with brand new software. So, but the $40,000 one has the labor and the time and all that included in it, or is there yeah. an additional cost to that too? Yeah, so the reason it's $40,000 is because it incorporates all the project management time, getting the software set up, the full installation of everything. And then the recurring cost going forward next year will be 33, and that's just for the software itself. We were able to negotiate a deal on this one um, to be able to implement it this year, hopefully. It would normally cost around $50,000. We were able to get them down to 40 to be able to move forward and a few free months in addition. And that's going to be an additional 33,000 a year after that? Yeah, which is pretty standard. Most of the applications these days, that's what they're going for. If you look at some of the other departments, they're, they're very similar. But the, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not opposed to it. If we upgrade with 15000 this year, what's the cost next year? I'm not sure yet. We, if you mean just TMT? If you did the old system. So I'm trying yeah, to so if we did TMT for the fleet management, we would have to sort that out. That would be in something in next year's budget. Uh -huh. We don't have that budgeted for this year. We are waiting to see what we are going to find here. Um, so I can't tell you specifically, but that's only a small portion of what this application will do. So it's not really an apples for apples, but it's it's not going to be cheap. It's an on-prem solution, but it's at least 15 just to get the upgrade. And then we have to build out the servers. We have to purchase additional software, like the new version of SQL Server and such for that. And then all the training that will go into it. Well, the only reason I'm asking is you, this was twofold approach. One was the cost mm -hmm. of changing. Yeah. And you said it's going to be 33 next year, so it's going to be expensive from here on out. And the other part was efficiency. What what savings is there in the efficiency? Not double entering all the data. No so entry. So does that save a person? I mean, you. Not a whole person. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just, if you run it just for number's sake and. That's all, because you say you're getting the same results, only you're going to get something <laughs> way more efficient, but we're going to pay a lot more for it. Is that an advantage? I mean, that's all I'm asking them. Well, I think the advantage comes into um, personal. You have a, a complete software package to manage the department. Right now we're putting multiples together. They're on different systems. And you're spending more administrative time managing those. Not to mention, as she stated, the, the upgrade cost associated with bringing it up. We're not sure we're going to get what we want to get out of the package. So to answer your question, yes, it's going to be a net increase in cost, about three thousand, maybe four thousand dollars a year uh, annually. Uh, but you get a much better system. The efficiency and workload for our employees. We don't know the outcome yet. We're expecting efficiency, whether that there's a savings of one person per year, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I, I think there might be other work that can be accomplished, less time inputting data. But I don't think this person's dedicated all day to input data. No, right? and we did get, we did eliminate an office position uh, in those two years. And mm -hmm. so I remember that. It's possible. Oh. I think you just actually mentioned a lot of the points that I was going to mention and maybe ask. Um, but the other question was, I know like this past year when we were looking at fleet and vehicles and stuff, some of the information we, we were looking for wasn't easily accessed. So I'm assuming with this new software, we're going to be able to get the reporting uh, that's easier as well, right? Or it'll be more accessible. I believe so. Jay yeah. was in on the um, meetings that we had and he was very happy with what it does for purple. It's huge because there's a lot of time that's spent trying to get the information we're looking for, and sometimes we're still not able to produce. Yep. So, uh, Jay and Sir. Harry, what do we get for 33000 besides the licensing use? Is it an adaptable program that you can continue to massage to, it to, is. to yeah. help them? If something isn't working, they can change it to make it more efficient? Or Absolutely. Yeah, we certainly have. They have all the support that comes with it. 
the application itself appears to be very well written in terms of adaptability and flexibility, being able to customize that I would need to do this. You know, I was also really happy with uh, the reporting features and being able to extract data. So we had our developer in on the calls as well to take a look at that. We can easily pull the data out into CSV files that we can then manipulate if we wanted to change it or you know make the data display. Not change the data, but be able to present it in a way that wasn't already built into the application. Change the data so that that's a custom report. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sue, you had a question? And this was and I think there's an answer to talk to that grant and being able to uh, submit for um, return money that would be much easier to do it. Oh, yeah, because it keeps it, yeah, it, when they go out on the project, they'll put it directly into the project. So it doesn't come back to the office and have the uh, office staff putting it into it. Okay. Bring it in down a level so I can understand quick. <clears throat> Let's use the design maker, for instance. We'll know how many hours and how much that one uh, job throughout the winter would cost. Yep. We, and it would be a couple of years because we can't compare what the new system would do with the old system because it's not apples to apples. So we'd have to start at the beginning to compare prices that way. Yes. So when we started looking down at looking down the road at these uh, this software purchase, when we were looking at uh, companies to consider, we we have a program in the office, a number of programs that are through IT. It's not something that we purchase, but it's a, it's a lot of data entering and pulling stuff like Melissa was talking about in that. So we've been trying to find that. We found that with this, Terry mentioned that TMT is coming to an end. Do they have that component? They do have that component. So that's why we want it. That's why we're over budget because we want to put TMT into it to solve two problems. I think, Jonathan, did that answer your question? I mean, you're talking about trending a cost of something over time, right? Right. Yep. Yep. And we have that data now. It's just that this will do it more efficiently. It doesn't come into the office, then get added to the different projects. It, okay, so we could tell. Them. Yes. Our back files would match up with this, so we could yes. compare. Yep. Okay. Dan, you had other questions? No, I wanted to move the resolution to finance to secure. Do I have a second? Second. Multiple seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. All right, now we're off on the business. Go back to your agenda. Oh, right. But I right. do have Thanks, other Terry. business. Okay. Thank you. Carry over. So carry over grants. So this is the time of year that um, we have to look at our budget and carry over grants because grants don't carry over. So we have. Uh, Wait, look at me. I, <laughs> I don't think they because have. I don't know why they don't. They don't have a sheet. <laughs> no. So we have three carryover grants that we would like to carry over. One is County Route 37 drainage improvement for 400000 These are already grants that we have. They just have money left in last year. They have not, we've not finished the grant. We need a motion for each separate. You're going to carry it all at once. We're going to do it all at once. So, you want to hear yeah. the carryover? So, we'll do that. Okay. Next, we have a WQIP culvert replacement program. We have $187,005 to carry over. We have WQIP roadside erosion grant for $96,390 to carry over. Those are the carryover grants. Um, we also have two closeout grants. These are for the brine maker. And we're done. Right, let's that. let's do the carryover. I'm on okay. the carryovers. So okay. I mean, Cassie, yeah. uh, second, Jay. Any discussion on carryovers? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Close us. So uh, the Brian maker, Brian maker that um, we put up in Whitehall that John was mentioning earlier, that is a complete program. 
all the admin stuff has been done on that, so we would like to close out that grant. You don't need any action to close on. Okay. So we're closing it. <laughs> information. Information. Next up, we have surplus auction. Mm -hmm. So we have two cars to go to auction. Ford Explorer and Plaza. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. one is from Carpool and one is from EM. So request that we can declare those two surplus. Motion by the A, second by Cass, the A discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we also have truck surplus. So we got our four new trucks. And plowing has been dreamed for us now that we are not chasing carts and breakdowns. So I appreciate the new program that we have where we're replacing more often. So we got our four trucks and we would like to declare surplus for other trucks. Um, one is the first three, HT 47, 31, and 30. Those are all max force trucks. Um, as you may recall, Max Force is the international trucks that um, we got the rebates for. So they had problems and we got $90,000 total in rebates for those trucks. Um, it was $10,000 per truck. So if the towns are interested in any of those trucks, I would just say buyer dealer. <laughs> that, did the highway superintendents get this information? I sent it out, but I will make sure. Well, just, I mean, they kind of huh? know more what we think they need. I'll make sure I'm part of it. There's the buyer beware clause that I think they're in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan, you want the Army truck. You do? You do. I do. Well, he's going to take the horse. Put his saddle on it and go. Okay. I'm going to ask you what I'm going to do. Um, so the horse is the tractor part of the tractor trailer. So we have <laughs> tractor trailers. This is not set up as a plow truck. I just don't want anybody to think that it's ready to be a plow truck. It's um, It pulls a trailer. Okay. So when I when I reach out to the superintendents, if anyone is interested in this, is it okay if we put it on to our um, town highway auction that we've done in the past like twice now? Mm -hmm. Send it out to the towns yep. and yep. villages and they can bid on it. Yep. Yeah. So I will make sure I get a yes or no from all of the towns and villages before I that um the other one at, so that was the horse so any more questions about the horse as well so truck ht42 is the one that we have that sandgate has been renting for a couple of years um al were you able to find out how much was that on income on that i think it's like forty thousand, but i'm not sure So we've been, um, they have been renting this truck from us and they would like to purchase it. Um, it is, a, it, that's the army truck at the bottom of the list. So are you interested in putting that out on a town bid to- Just to touch over 40. Just to touch over. And allowing Sandgate, since they're not in the county, I just wanted to make sh sure that was amenable to everyone. We made over twelve thousand off of renting it. Yep. Thirty eight. And now they want to buy it. What was the expense of keeping it off? Like we did. For us, yeah. we did oil changes and we had tires and we put those tires on it recently. Those tires don't fit any of our trucks. So we put it wasn't a cost that we have you recently incurred. It was huh? You said used tires. They just had. I don't think they were used. They we bought them long before. Oh, I, okay. Before it's in inventory tires. Yes, we had inventory tires that only fit the army truck. Yeah. 
We put them on there. It's just the last. I mean, yes. Last set of tires, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. No more parts left on the shelf for the army truck. Right. Time to sell. Not that there were any anyway. Remember, it was built by the lowest bidder. How are we gonna How are we gonna work that if we don't put it out? We have to put it out. Yeah. So if we, I was, I'm asking if I can put that one out as a town bid, like we do the other ones. But well, include Saint. Include Saint. Sorry. If that's okay with you. What do you mean? I think you ought to get for them that anyway. And an that amount of money. You already paid it for it. It's only from October of 22 to current, so it's not a very long period of time that they spent that money on. So the, um, do I have a motion to move these trucks to? Sure. Uh, Thank you. Second. Yeah, unanimous second almost. Any other discussion on the truck? All those in favor? Oh, um, twice. Well, I'm just wondering from Dean, is there, is there got to be a right way to word this so that you can do it for the same gate? Or How did we do it in the past? Did we do any special? We did special auction? Did we, like the other one? we just did it and we invited instead of. It seems like it's not a simple thing. I'll have to look at it. Then. Yeah. Great. Next. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, next up is Grid Brick on County Route 49. Yep. So we have to replace a bridge deck on um, our County Route 49. This um, is a very busy road. It used to be the state road. I don't know why we took it back, but we did. And we're going to close it April 15th, and we're going to hopefully have it open before June 1st. So we've done, uh, I just want everyone to know that we've worked really hard to make this be closed in a short amount of time as possible. There's not really any easy way to put a detour bridge in for this road. Um, the detour is 18 miles. Um, it's in Greenwich. It's right next to Ferguson Road, that bridge that mm -hmm. everybody watched get replaced by Virginia. So I just that, wanted to let you know. That's actually a bridge and not a culvert, huh? Yes. Yep. But the superstructure bridge. Yep, it's a, we're putting a su new superstructure on it. We're not replacing the um, abutments um, because they're in, in decent shape, so they'll need to. That was in Paul. Right? In Paul. Um, <laughs> we are having a mother nature because she was. Yes. Um, we're having a paint collection event. We do about two of these a year. It's Saturday, April 20th from 9 to 1. So um, we will send you all our flyers so that you can advertise on your website or at your towns and stuff like that. I'll cut down on um, advertising in the paper because it's kind of a free event until we advertise. So we'll put it in the paper for a week. But we wanted you guys to know about it. So April 20th, Saturday? Yep. Here at the here at Fort Edward. Next up, we have some mini bids to award. Oh, yeah, yeah. a quick question. Sorry. So the notice will tell us the, how do you have to prepare to paint the front end? Uh, yes. Yep, it tells all on the um paint ad. Um I can find the link. Yep. It tells what's accepted, what's not accepted. Um, but how to prepare it. So it email? Yep. So and so have Facebook. Yes. Okay. Yep. We're going to put it on our Facebook so that it gets a focus from. Gotcha. Um, we did submit, just as an aside, now that I think about it, for reimbursement for our household hazardous waste that we did last year. You have to submit it with DEC this year. So we did that. Um, but next up, we have. Many bids for carpool. We have two small SUVs. The low bid for that is Ferrario. We get Ferrarios. Uh -huh. Ferrario Auto Team. It's two Jeep Renegades. 
um, $26,534 each for a total of $53,068. We also, how do we do this? Do we do them separate or send them to finance? Yeah, separately. Separately, yeah. 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 Yep, and then we have two hybrid small SUVs for carpool that goes to Hudson Motor Partnership for Toyota RAV4 <clears throat> hybrids for $33,282 each for a total of $66,516. Those are all in our budget. Um, they were they were in our budget and they are under budget. So. Um, motion, and, to, motion to move the full board. Thanks, Cassie. Second. Paul? Any other discussion? Dan? Yeah. Why uh, SUVs? I mean, why hybrid SUVs? Um, You're paying 13000 more for the pair. Jamie put those in his budget for our for our budget, and we talked about it and approved it. So. Well, you approved the money. But why, now that we bid it and realize it's going to cost us 13000 more, why do we want the hybrids? Because now you got it. You, is this where you have to have a charging station or does it no, just no, plug no. in? Is that no. the one where it charges itself from yeah. running it, right? Yeah. But why are we thirteen spending 13000 more than we need? Where, is where's you're the save? You're to save more than that gas, probably. Over the life. I think the resale value, you're probably going to be all double too. You compare to the vehicles. I thought Oh, hybrid. The battery was the most expensive, and that the uh, the resale goes down on you because you got to replace the battery. I don't think that's the hybrid. That's the electric. If that's just electric, there is no special battery in that. I mean, I I just was wondering if you researched this enough. That's for thirteen thousand more. I've had Toyota hybrids. Mm -hmm. hybrids for years, one 15 years, but never replaced the battery. You resold it, never replaced the battery, and batteries are not a problem with hybrids. It may be a problem with electric. I know there's problems with, the, with some of the upgraded, older upgraded, but uh, fine. I don't know, not the new ones, but. Uh, like mileage, as far as mileage, I've had both the gas on the trap for you. Hybrid, I'm getting two and a half times the gas mileage. It's hybrid. It's, it's in, and around, uh, in and around town driving is where you really say it. Brian well, then. The BB5. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian tried to flip the BB5. So, my question then is are you going to track this to see if there's a savings? Like Jay states that it's, we'll save it in gas. The only way you can is to track it. Well, we have all that data. That's so why we're getting a new program. I was waiting for that. <laughs> well, I mean, otherwise we're spending thirteen thousand dollars. And I think that was the discussion, Dan, is when we decided to get two of them was to see what the cost upkeep difference was going to be between them. But we're going to know until we tried it. That's yeah. why we decided to get two of them. I don't know where I was that day. Sometimes <laughs> we don't know either. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> You said that they came in under budget. Did they come in under enough to bridge the gap in the in the software? Uh, oh, I have to check. Just curious, because that might be a way to kind of. Yeah, I just asked that for the because they're, you know, if there's six grand savings there, maybe you can apply that to the software. But it is different funds. I'm aware. I'm just telling you. I know how to get it from you. <laughs> we can move stuff out. Bunch, right? Bunch, bunch of options. Options. Yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy. Bunch <laughs> of options. Make that happen. Any other discussion on this? Vehicles. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One opposed. Bad. I believe the motion carried. Uh, another award for bid is permanent corrugated metal forms. So these are. Yeah, we, we the other yeah, 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 and the rest is picked up by it, it one level recoup it in one year and a different level recoup it as it depreciates. So we recoup it both ways, it's just how we recoup it depends on the per distance. So I don't okay. So right there. Yeah, we had a motion on the table to move the uh, small SUV DSS to health and human services. We move to do that, but we have a second just for procedure. Lots of seconds. Any discussion on that one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, that's off the ESS or health and human services. Now we're on the corrugated sheet. A chicken. Okay, yeah. So um permanent the permanent corrugated metal forms are these things that uh bridges. So we did this last year. Um when you put the beams up, you drop in these forms. To form up the rebar for the concrete. We used to do it with um, plywood. So we would cut the plywood and try to make it fit. Um, last year, we did not get anyone to bid the material alone. Um, they only bid installation with the material. Uh, do you have these bids on? Do you have the color? No. We don't have them. So. This is the Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't see So this bit is um for two different bridges. They are both in Camden Valley. Um, furnishing the pans is uh TC TVCR Town and County Bridge and Rail is the name of the company for $12,960. Um, it's also bid to furnish the pans and install them was 3D rigging. That was $34,890. Our intention is to purchase the materials and install them ourselves for the $12,960. Um, this was budgeted in our bridge line for our bridges. The next bridge is also in Camden Valley. It was bid material for $11,490 and furnish and install is $33,120. You want to install those yourself? Our intention for that one is also to um, so install them. Bid for material only. Well, when you award a bid, you award the whole bid. So you just award the whole bid, but just for your information, we are doing materials and installation. So what do we need the committee to approve here? I, guess, I think point. it goes to, does this one go up to yes. um, you need a board resolution for board resolution. Board to finance, right? Or no? Uh, no, it's just to the board. It's within, to the board. It's within budget. Oh, it's within budget. Oh, yeah. Cassie's moving it. Do I have a second? Paul moved it out second. <laughs> Paul moved it, Cassie seconds. So Discussion, can. Um, Is this reusable? No. No. Permanent. Pardon me? Permanent. Stay in. All the, they, they stay in right place in. metal forms. Yep, permanent coordinated metal forms. These were originally in the um, miscellaneous bids that we do, but nobody bid. Mm -hmm. So we went out and pounded the pavement and they borrowed and found some. Does this come concrete cut mm -hmm. or do you have to cut it off? It comes pre cut. We just have to weld brackets on the so, beams and then they just drop in. Two seconds. So, that bridge A is bred by the next before these two bridges. That I, do I have that right? No, there's three bridges out there. We call them the first and the last. And we're not addressing the middle this year. So, the first one is the one that does not have a temporary bridge on it at the moment. 
The last one, we put a temporary bridge up last fall. That's right next to the uh, Vermont border. Um, then we got a red flag on the first bridge. So we don't have any temporary bridges left. Thank you, Jay. Um, so we are borrowing a bridge, a temporary bridge from think from Warren County. And that's going in hopefully this week. Yes, because we can't we can't take our material over the first bridge to fix the last bridge when it has a red flag on it. So we had to put a temporary bridge up because we can't do the first bridge first either. So Hopefully. Until we get more red flags. Dana, you had a question? Thank you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I misspoke. We don't need a resolution for that because it's under 50,000. Oh, okay. so, so that's just uh, awarded. The permanent corrugated metal board. Right, no resolution is needed. It's all good to go. It looks like the car savings is only 3,300 bucks, so I'm not a lot. You're out of luck? Yeah. But uh, it is 3,300 now. It's still 3,300. That's right. <laughs> that, that's just for the material. Yes. We're going to do it this out. You don't get the whole bed with installation and everything. I just so we it. award the whole bed because you don't just pick and choose the bids. But I'm just telling you that our intention is to use the furnish only, the materials only. We're not. That's how we're going to build. They're not separate bids. You can't award part of the bid. So labor is included in the bid? Total cost, yeah. If we're to use it. There's, there's two parts of the bid. We put it out for materials. Okay. And company X bid on materials. We put it out for materials and installation and company Y bid on that. So because it was all the same bid, it has to all be awarded. I just want you to know it's not our intention to spend the $34,890 on installing. I think okay. <laughs> it's under 50000 for the materials. So that one's good. All right, so we're good on that one. What else you got, Deb? What are we voting on? The last one. Um, Permanent corrugate has the bid. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the discussion. So, oh, yeah, we have a motion to accept that. Right. Any other? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So, we went to advocacy days. Um, they didn't necessarily give us what we wanted, so um, I'll send out an email with a QR code. Does everybody know how to do a QR code? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll picture it. But then we can do a picture. <laughs> it just it sends you to the link and you fill in your name and it sends a letter to the legislators. Um, we're just trying to get everybody and their relatives to inundate the legislators and understand how important it is to support the local roads funding. Anna, you had a question? Was there an advocacy about the big bridge? So, advocacy. Uh, so I'm still looking into the Dix Bridge. So the Dix Bridge is the one that is a pedestrian bridge that we have to inspect and it costs a tremendous amount of money to inspect. So I've talked to DOT about it. And one thing that I found is kind of like us with our bridges. So um, we have rules on what bridges are ours, and they have rules on what bridges they inspect. And they only inspect pedestrian bridges in their rules if they go over a state highway, because they don't want something wrong with it to affect their highway. So they push back on that. The thing that I'm doing now is I talked to um, Saratoga County yesterday, and after the bridge was given to Saratoga and Washington County, I don't know if anybody was here to remember all this, but mm -hmm. they got a grant for uh, tip. It was some sort of funding that they got and they did a whole bunch of work to it. So I'm trying to understand all the work that was done to it and the agreements that were made 
Deb send in, sent me some resolutions on that. Um, so I'm trying to get that story figured out before I go down there and try to lobby with the bike path to get them to inspect the bridge. So it's still working in progress. Yeah, sir. I, I was here when they did that. Of course, y'all get a little foggy on uh, all the details, but we didn't spend any money on that. All the Saratoga County did, as I recall. And I'm not even sure if Washington County accepted that. There was something in that resolution that said we agreed to be, I, I can send it to you. Uh, we agreed to be partners in it because we were per owners. I don't. But we didn't spend any money, did we? I remember Alan Brown was opposed to spending any money. Um, I think the resolution said we agreed to. We agreed to do to agree. I forget. I don't have the resolution with me on the computer, but I don't think we spent any money. I think it was all grant money. Well, Saratoga County put up money, but we had to do something in order to get the funding from the grant. Did you read the resolution? I did, and I know the agreement we, was that. We agreed to pay 50% of it, I think, right? Oh. We're going to pay half of it. I thought it was correct. Mm -hmm. We did that. We showed it to me. But I know we didn't spend the money. We were too cheap back then. Have things changed? <laughs> big time. I hope. Trust me, big time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Any updates? Uh, uh, we have a meeting um, at 1 o'clock. Uh, there, it's in the section 106 process, which um, that is where SHPO and historic preservation and all of that gets hashed out. That's a long process. Anyone else want a shot at that? <laughs> <laughs> what did we hear from the engineers and the Great Lane Bridge meeting. We have a meeting at two o'clock. Two of them at one o'clock. Is that bridge? Two o'clock. Is that bridge? I'll update you on that. Understand? This isn't a shot at them, but is this under other? Is this where we're at? Yes. Yes. Um, other other. I'd asked you to ask them because I was going to. I wasn't here at that other meetings. Uh, I didn't know where I was. Know. About stop signs, road yep. signs, all that yep. that you were going to put out a price sheet to the town for what we can buy them for from the town. That is in our bids, our miscellaneous bids, so they don't go out. I'm sorry. What? Is, isn't that in our miscellaneous bids, the sign lamps? Yeah, but what would we want a sign by for? We just want no, the actual signs. You gotta, you gotta make the sign. Your bridge. Right? Right? Oh, okay. So what do you want? You want a, a price. A price, price for yeah, a staff price. sign? Otherwise, we have to order them elsewhere. Yeah. And you have a sign shop. And at one time, it was uh, towns were... Yeah, but everybody always goes through a sign shop and just gets yeah. there. Uh, well, what's the price? They call him and he tells See? them, but I'll get it for you. Okay, because I've asked for that several of our times. Okay. At the beginning of the year, when like we're going to order signs for the, for the year, and... If we had a price sheet, because uh, my highway superintendent, I asked him, and he wasn't sure what the prices were, and he bought them somewhere else. And I said, "Did we cost us more or save us money?" And he didn't know. So it'd be nice to know what those numbers are. Yeah. Now, how do you do a street sign? You do it according to the number of letters on it. If you if you want to get a price that? Street sign. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so you get a signed blank yep. and you, so you purchase those off a of bid. You also get, um, the, the reflective coating that goes on it, yep. um, the red, and then you get the reflective white that goes on it. Um, Matt bought a cutter a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I know all that. I just and he right. cuts it all out, puts it on the thing. So I guess it would cost signed blank, the sticker cost and the labor. Right. So there are, you want to have a number that we can use, yeah. whatever that is. Because if we order them, we don't know what it's going to cost till we're done. See, or if you had that price sheet, then we could decide we want to spend 
thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or whatever I signed it. So I'll get Matt to get us a sheet. I, I guess the superintendents always just reached out to Matt and he told them how much they would be. Hmm. Maybe my town's the only one that doesn't know it, but I mean, we don't know. Do you know what your prices are? Better than yeah. I mean, that's what I thought they would be, but I mean, I don't have that information. But you can get it. I'm happy if you can. You know, okay. Send okay. It. I guess we must have miscommunicated because I, I thought you were sending that to the superintendents. I okay. think they do. They know. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have that many bullet holes in our sockets. No, uh, <laughs> they so, steal them in our Oh, okay. Thanks, Dad. Thank we got to move on to the sewer yeah. district. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Sorry, Rob, sir. Sorry. You got 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got 10 minutes to get it all done. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> David, I don't need to get that uh, Well, that's good. That way, they, don't, they shouldn't have any questions. <laughs> Tabulated data. Somebody. Right, sir. Sorry. Well, yeah, first of all, I apologize for all of the handouts. I can't promise it'll be the last time, but I apologize. We, every item on here had a handout or a couple to go with it. The first item on the agenda, um, the first and the third are kind of related, so I might cross over in my conversation, but. Uh, we have a project going on in our sewer district number one. Originally, uh, it was for manhole and sewer line rehabilitation, as well as cured in place piping. We found out recently that there is a state contract for the cured in place piping that we could piggyback on and save a bunch of money. So we separated out the two. Uh, so now we have a contract for that. And then we, I'm gonna, go to the, the bid award in a, in a little while for the rest of the work. But um, we're estimating we'll save over $200,000 by utilizing <laughs> the, the cured in place uh, state contract. Um, if there's any questions about the actual project, I, I could take those, but you know, I'm asking the committee to forward this to the full board for execution. And there's just one change from the handout you have. The signature page has my title on there. It's just going to be changed to the chair. We need to do that on state comments. We can. I mean, truly. No. I think the state contract, I don't know if it's going to be an awarding a bid or not. I think it should be fine. Not our state contract. All right, I need the chair to sign out. However, we get there. Let me check our hold. Anyone else? Nature signature. So, a motion to move that to the full board. Tim, second. Oh, thank you, sir. Any other discussion on the uh, cured in place contract for the state? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. All right. So if you don't mind, <laughs> right. you don't mind I'll, I'll do number three next um, because it's related or it's the rest of the project, the sewer rehab project bid award. We went out to bid. Uh, we were very pleased with the bids, uh, mainly the, the lowest bidder. It is a reputable company. Is this your tabulated bid of summer? Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, in the packet, you know, tabulated data supply he's referencing. National Water Main Cleaning Company is the low, lowest responsible bidder. Their bid was 159700 and they were over $123,000 cheaper than the, the next closest bidders. I'm asking the committee to award the bid for that company. Motion to accept that bid. All second by 10. Discussion? John. All this has to go through the sewer boards, too, correct? Or this is going through the county? The, the bid award? Yeah, yeah. typically I would go to the, our, our board of commissioners first. We just received the bid, so time for time's sake, I'm bringing it here now. It will go to the 
commissioners in about two weeks. I have spoke with our chair and he knows I'm going to the committee first. I'm going to recommend the same thing to the board of commissioners. But if the committee disagrees and we say okay. Yeah. You'd be right. Then we'll go ahead and come back to us. Great. Well, you the safest way then to say per commissioner approval, and that way, if they don't approve it, if everything is null and void, we start over again. Well, you'll know by the board meeting. Great. It's going to go yeah. to the board meeting. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, the, the next board of commit, the sewer board of commissioners meeting will be before the full board of supervisors meeting. Uh, nine times out of ten, I go there first and I bring the recommendation to this committee. But fortunately, that way the bid, the date the bid came in, I couldn't do that here. Yeah, frost is out of the ground. We got to move. I'm well, but John is right. That was a, a policy that the county instituted. Everything was approved first by the commissioner before it came to us. So I mean, that's why he's bringing that up. And the only way is a time sensitive now. So by adding on per approval by the commissioners, we've honored that part of requirement. Okay. So we can amend the motion. Everyone okay with you amend the motion? Yes, Tim, you made it, right? Correct. That's exactly what you <laughs> meant to Absolutely. say. I second amendment. And, and a second. <laughs> yes. yes. You're comfortable with the fact that they're so much cheaper than the other ones? You still are comfortable My, my with first thought as well. Um, the design engineer has worked with that company. Uh, I believe that was one of the later handouts you received last night. And we have a recommendation letter from them as well. They've worked with that company on multiple projects and they're, they're good. Yeah, they're more expensive on the lower part, but they're definitely way really cheaper on the upper part. Yeah, I think the manhole grouting was the big price difference. So they must just be able to do that more efficiently or have a better piece of equipment to do that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And do you have an all in number for that project? I'm sorry? Do you have an all in number for that project? Uh, it should be able to get yeah, okay. It's much less than we originally thought. Well, yeah, this bid was underestimated and the uh, security in place was somewhat under that. We're at like one five and we're right. going to come significantly under that. Yeah. So good, good. Very good. All right, sir, next. So backwards to uh, number two on the agenda, the CHPE crossing agreement. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the CHPE project, depending on where you are in the county. Yeah. It is the <laughs> Champlain Hudson Power Express. It's a power line going from Canada down to New York City. And lucky us, they are cutting through our boundaries of our system. They're not coming too close to our lines, but nonetheless, you know, we have to go through all these documents. That is the bulk of the handouts you have. Uh, we went through months of review back and forth, and we feel we are ready to execute this contract. Um, so I'm just asking the committee, similar to the cured in place, forward us to the full board for execution. Motion. Yeah. I'll motion for a uh, move. For a discussion. second. Thank you. The Kevin Dan, have you seen it? I have. Okay. So as long as our county attorney says it's okay, then. Any other questions? Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Well, we can talk to our Dan and his Yeah, this just the. Yep. Yeah, this part will find. Okay. See you Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, other business, we, you have a resolution in front of you for. Seeker findings. Uh, this is for our Hudson Falls 1A project. Our goal with, with that is just to get this done in a timely manner and apply for funding by June. So, fortunately, I had to squeeze this in between dates of meeting. So, the seeker coordinator view is out now. We're not anticipating any major environmental impacts. Um, <laughs> Once we once the coordinator review is done, uh, we will ask for the the EAF forms to be reviewed and completed by the full board. Uh, 
And if there are any environmental concerns now, we will update that resolution accordingly. You know. so, so there already has been secret done on this project. Yeah. Well, we'll just redo it again. Motion to accept move to the full board. Paul? Certainly. Any other discussion on this? Yes, I have two. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. Any other other? Sue, first. <laughs> Um, does that actually get money from the organization like the county? I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. I, I don't think so. No, that wasn't part of the original agreement that I remember. No, just the municipalities. So the municipalities, schools, and county. Correct. Maybe some of the special districts, like fire taxes, and if there are sewers that it goes through, they would be responsible for special district taxes in the, in the village. That'll be not for its employment strength. Right. Right. So, but the switch networks just came on our meetings. It's been there about two years. So after that March 1st deadline, it goes well. So, I think it's all for us. I think we'll show up after the fact. 2027, by the We'll give you a hand for the chair. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know of that. That's the first time I've heard of it. That was prior to me coming with the county, I think those, yeah. those talks were yeah, They've dealt with our water system in the village of M. Y. Hall the same way they're doing this. Correct. Correct. But I don't think the water, I mean, the municipality or the school districts get the revenue. I don't think the public. Sewer districts have it. Yeah. Well, I remember how the sewer district works in the water. There's an agro on the everyone pays. If you have a piece of property, you pay that tax on the, if it's based on the assessed value, then you pay for uses on top of that. Right. I don't know if this would apply to them because they're not going to own the land just to cross it. Um, but I will say it's. None of this has cost the district any money. The engineer can do a legal road due is covered by CH CHP. I think what the question is, are you going to get any revenue or benefit out of it? So I don't know. No, that goes through to the township to go right. to the road. Right. They'd have to fight for it to make an agreement with it. I don't think that was in the fight to begin with. Right. right. Good question. Any okay. other any other on these others? Dana was going to have one for the left. <laughs> All right. Yeah. One more other. You have one more other? I believe so. Um, I'm just asking for the, the committee's thoughts and hopefully approval. Uh, we're doing annual safety training for our employees down there. Um, I've been told some of uh, some past practice in the county maybe to have a lunch for the employees on the last day of the safety training. Um, so I'm asking for approval to purchase a meal for the employees on the last day of safety training. Oh, sure. Yes. Okay, got it. Second. Are we keeping it under 20 bucks? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm a> <laughs> per, <laughs> per person, <laughs> maybe. For a hot dog. your I do have a training line of a budget. Yeah. Yeah. And Could that be reworded to where it says by permission of the commissioner? That way that covers how we can I before. think that's that was just a board decision to ask for that approval to purchase food. I don't think the commissioners have an issue with no. you using the budget. No. Yeah. Well, the commission is that coming out of your budget? No. Yes, it is. Well, then, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. It's a county policy. Oh, it's a county policy to get this committee's approval if I'm gonna purchase meals. Right. And have they approved it? The commission? I, I've talked with the chair, yes. Because there. otherwise we're back. In we don't need it. He doesn't actually need their approval. They don't ask for that approval. Right. I am. Decision for us. So it, actually you've mentioned it to the commission, but they don't they don't need to or ask for that approval. 
But how does that work with an arm policy where you don't approve it without commissioner approval? That's, that's yeah. separate policy. policy. Yes. yes sir. And it's it's so like here, of course, it's the same type of thing. We approve money at the committee level when we do the budget, and then we turn around and we ask for it again. They already approved it in their budget. Right. If the commissioner submitted the budget, they know right. it's, submitted. it's already in there. It's already approved once. And they're just asking us to bless it. So motion to okay. second by Paul Scott. Any other? Okay. Alan, I would just ask that you work with Melissa's office because we keep tripping up on sales tax issues with these luncheons. So we have some ways to do it properly if you'll work with our. And the one that you've already mentioned getting it from does take. Tax so I just want to throw that out there because we keep tripping up over the sales tax issue. Yeah. We're good on it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Any other others? That's all the other others. Thank you, sir. Good. Any other business? We're adjourned. <laughs> Okay, we'll call the public safety meeting to order. First up is we'll accept the minutes for February 27th. Have a motion by Jim. Seconded with Nate and John. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. First one up is Tony. 
It's been a hot seat today, so well. <laughs> you can go quick. I'll change that. <laughs> so just in time before the 24-25 budget gets approved, we've gotten money from a discovery reform funding plan that includes monies for alternatives to incarceration and the sheriff's department. So we need a motion, I believe, to move those funds right out to something. Yeah, we're gonna budget for your uh, grant for the 0.4 pieces and not the 0.1 pieces, but it'll be moved to finance. And year three on this time, is this number? Yes. Three, three, I think. Yeah. And so, yes, yeah, so yes. So the alternatives to incarceration is for pretrial services to staff attendance at the centralized arraignment part. Mm -hmm. The sheriff's department has general compliance, uh, staffing, technology needs for the new, well, not new anymore, but for the discovery requirements. And then there's a specific piece, which is a copier for the investigators. Um, when they do search warrants, et cetera, it's a hundred years. Of pages they had to copy. They have one now that goes shh, shh, shh. so sit around for hours and the judge gets angry way too. So and the goal was to buy a machine that's in the That's a very good it's industry. Good. Is it? <laughs> Literally that's what it's like if you want to watch that. Like, yeah. Oh, there's one page. Uh, I'll make that motion. Moved by Daryl, seconded by Chase. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Proposed. Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff? I only got about three tweets. Yeah. At least he didn't do a mimeograph like I had in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Smell them out. Smell them out. Smell them out. Morning. Uh, Morning, sir. I have an annual report on the agenda, but I do have another item in my shock that uh, didn't make the agenda. But I'd like to have a request, and that is uh, a salary affixed to the uh, special patrol officer position part time. So currently, we have nine schools that we contract with, and they have rates that they pay to reimburse the county for the hours that the SBO works. We have one SBO that kind of like a floater to like cover schools that um, if, if one of the SBOs is out or vacation sick or whatever. So he gets paid the rate that whoever the guy or girl is that's out. So he just gets, if he's in hustle calls, he gets hustle calls, right? If he's in green, which is green, right? What we don't have is a, a rate for someone who doesn't work under contract with the school. Um, the SPO job description allows us to use SPO's different um, job title or job duties than just schools. So when Scott downstairs, for instance, is not here, an SPO could fill in there, um, but we don't have a rate to pay them that. So what I'd like to do is create a rate, and I, I think the rate should be uh, the same as a part-time deputy, which is a grade 10, I think it's 22 to 12. Um, because it would also uh, be less expensive to an SPO, for instance, downstairs here, than it would be to use the deputy on overtime or somebody else filling in for Scott, when Scott's not here. Um, and we also could use an SPO for any public buildings, any county buildings that, that we have. So if the Board of Elections, for instance, needed somebody for something, we could use that person at that rate. And again, that would be much cheaper than you know staffing that with a full-time deputy. Um, we also could use the, the SPO uh, job description includes uh, records. So to the district attorney's uh, point where he just mentioned the uh, money for Discovery. Discovery is a huge lift for our department. We have several members of the command staff that are involved in the discovery process, and that is uh, reviewing body cam footage, um, making sure all the cases that are submitted uh, to the district attorney's office are in order before they go over there, um, and 
it's a lot of work. We currently have probably five people. So we could use uh, this title and position to do some of that as well, not 40 hours a week, but to help out with that with that title. So basically what I'm asking is if we can, it's already in the staffing pattern, the SPO uh, uh, position itself, but it's only linked to those that are in contract with schools. So I just like to have uh, that position, right? And I don't think we would need more than three. So if we wanted to amend the staffing tab, uh, able to add three, uh, I think that would be sufficient. But we just need to fix a dollar amount, uh, hourly dollar amount to that position. Are you moving this to personnel? Because we yeah. Any questions? This is staffing there for me, I guess that's true. Do you currently have people on payroll that are following these duties? We have one that, that like I said, it's a floater, so to speak. So he covers schools already but, in the budget. Yep, but he gets uh, whatever the uh, the rate is for that school he covers. But we, what we don't have is if we were to use someone in that title that's not connected to a school. So, so for instance, here in this building. So right now he's on call, that person's on call, or? Yep. And you're proposing that they're not on call, that they're actually working? No, I would just say that we, uh, I'd like to add a couple more. Uh, we have interest in those positions. Uh, we use retired state police, uh, retired people from our office, uh, retired corrections. Uh, and, and I just see that they're, you know, there is a need currently, like when Scott's not working, you know, it would be cheaper to have an SBO cover that folks than it would be we we're doing it now. Yeah, yeah we do it now. Sure. Yeah, with overtime or pulling somebody off the road or whatever. Um, and I mean, also, you know, there may be a need in the future for someone to be in DMV if they're having issues or or, or board of elections, like I said, uh, uh, during a uh, Election time. Yeah. So, Sheriff, oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's always up first. So, right now, Sheriff, there's one part time SPO um, right. in your staffing pattern. So, you want to add three, so you'll have a total of four yes. in the staffing pattern. And then, um, I think yesterday when we spoke about it also, the SPOs right now are all billed to the schools, right? So, the schools pay for those salaries. Yes. These positions that you're adding will actually be county positions right. that come out of county. Yes. That's the difference with the SPO because it's never really happened. Right. Yeah. And it, just because we say four doesn't mean that we'll have four. Right. Like we have uh, 10 part time positions in the staff pattern, but I don't, for part time deputies, but I don't have 10 part time deputies. We also have 20 part time correction officers. And we don't have anywhere near 20 correct, uh, part time correction officers. But, but we have that number in there should we need to increase those. Amount that we have. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Jim. Um, just to make sure you're talking about these positions to fill in as replacement where you would have to have someone. And what you're saying is generally when you have to have someone, you might be using a deputy, but you'd be paying more money. Right. So in the long run, this could be a money saver. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're also they're part time, so there's no benefits as well. At cost like that. Yeah. When they're not being used, they're not right. uh, getting paid at all, right? No retainers, nothing. No, no, only the hours that they're filling in for someone, or, or like, a, you know, unless we, you know, put a, we decide that, or county decides that they want to have someone else in one of the county buildings, it does fit that job description. So, you mean it could? But in 40, 40 hours a week, if somebody wanted, if we needed them at the county somewhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. If, like, if, like I said, if DMV was all of a sudden experiencing problems with people for whatever reason, and you wanted to add security over there for a, a bit, a while, or whatever, then that's what this position would be uh, perfect for. Me. A bit for a while, not for. Uh... 40 hours a week for 52 weeks. No, no, we whatever, whatever we use, you know, we agree with. And we can't work, they can't work more than 
20, 20, 20 hours. 20 hours, 20 20 20 hours. So that's why it would be helpful to have four as well, because you'd be able to have one that works 40 hours. You'd have to have two that works 20 hours. So, um, rather than order, it's got like a county resource officer rather than a school resource officer. How do you do that through the personnel? It's uh, the title is special patrol officer, and that uh, it's a civil service title. It was already on the books. It's not something that we created. It was already there when uh, when we. And so instead of using a school resource officer <laughs> title, we use school or a, a special patrol officer because it, it covers all these other areas. We just haven't um, had the uh, opportunity to use them because we can't pay them unless they're they're uh, they're being contracted by a school. Right. Well, basically, this is a pool of people that you just want in your scope when you need them. Yeah. You just want them availability. Correct. So, funding, they either need to be funded one way or the other because it's probably not in the budget unless we use breakage that there's always some there. If you look at it that way, it's a cheaper way than paying them over that. Yeah. Well, I haven't had a discussion with the treasurer yet about what specific line, but I would have assume the part-time deputy line might uh, be okay to use that because if there are they are part-time deputies they have a different title like special patrol officer instead of part-time deputy sheriff but they're not I don't think we would take them out of the SBO line because that might muddy the waters when it comes to reimbursement from schools but that's a discussion but I, I don't see this as being what it would school no. though, is their ability to use the old officers even as part time? Only in those types of job duties. So well, only that well yeah. they're SPL. So yeah. like if there wasn't anything going on at the school during the break or something, if they're not actually at the school, you could use them in any of these other capacities too, or is that correct? Else? Yeah, yeah. Just not it's a different title than deputy than part-time deputy sheriff, which we have right. we have some of those, but and it would be the same rate. It's just uh it would open up uh, another pool of people, so to speak, for specific jobs, including public buildings. Yeah, I think you were the last one on my list. Yes, cool. <laughs> yes thank you. So just a couple of questions, because it's probably going to go to the personnel, I'll ask one of the questions first that probably asked there. So these individuals are going to come in and go to, um, if you have five people working on them, uh, Discovery Now, so would you only bring in person in if you were down to four or would you need just six person no i think uh we would probably try you know if we had one available probably just work a couple days a week to see how that fits in with okay. with the, the current system but basically i have like command staff uniform people fully trained with you know you know guns and all ready to go and everything and they're they're, they're going over they're reviewing uh, body camera footage. They're, you know, going over cases. They're going over paperwork, things that really are more clerical kind of slash record, you know, keeping. Yeah. But you need a law enforcement yeah. uh, and, background to be able to. Yeah. And that brings me to the second question, which is: these people are going to need to be trained to do the discovery aspect of it. Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, like I said, that's why. It, honestly, I was looking at asking for. A civilian spot probably this year for next year's budget uh to to help with the discovery because it's just our cases are going up uh, the, the seriousness of the crimes that we're seeing are more serious um and it's more labor intensive to get that paper just returning in time there's more steps that are that are required there's a lot to it so right now there's there's people, like I said, that are you know within the command staff that have a lot of other duties that are doing things that this position uh, could help. With. And I'm not opposed to that. I'm just triggered in the training aspect of it because it can't be just anybody that does that. Right. It'd be minimal for somebody with a law enforcement. The, right. It'd be minimal for somebody who fits the uh, description of um, the job requirements. Yeah. 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 If you were able to be so much the special patrol. And train them for discovery, then you could potentially. Uh, is there a chance that you wouldn't have to hire a civilian? If yeah. you got, you know, Correct. Yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. So, Chairman? Yeah. Two things. Number one, if we 
have one of these guys that's going to go fill in the school, the school's going to pay for that, or are we paying to no. supplement it? Because they're paying the SROs. It's a, the SPO would be paid, uh, the whatever the rate is at the school is paying the whoever he's filling in for. But the school's not paying, we'd be paying. No, school no. pays if they work at the school. If they work at a school, the school would pay. If they work for us, so to speak, they work downstairs. So Scott. The, the officers that are there now are being paid on a daily basis, so if they don't show up, they don't get paid? Yes. So there's a reconciliation that I do with the school. Okay, all right. Yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah. I, I don't need to yeah. try and figure it out. So long as that's the answer is yes. Yes. All right. Number two, uh, what's the union think about it? Um, it's part time. So it's not a union position. Uh, it's not, we're not adding a, if a you union. Were to them, for example, to, I don't know, cover a freight or. Oh crap, we got a huge sink. Daryl's coming in his truck with us today and 100,000 people can be there. We're going to supplement, we're going to supplement stuff like that. It'd be essentially taking overtime away from the deputy. Would that not be a union? No, it, that's not an issue because uh, the, the only thing that I know of in the contract that uh, limits the use of part time deputies specifically, I don't, I don't think there's anything in the contract because it's so new, you know, the, the that's okay. real title. All right. Uh, but there is for uh, part time deputies, and that is that they can't work as an investigator. So they can't work on investigations. <laughs> but we don't we don't use part time deputies on the road like uh, a lot of places do have part time police officers and stuff. <clears throat> it's very rare. And, and, and if we do, it's uh, civil, serving civil papers and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, it's not. It's never been a union issue. But I, what about my, what about my favorite thing? Um. So I think we're we're down to one person that's part time that's been the, through the training, and I don't know if he works any of the boat patrol hours or not. But we're sending two uh, full time deputies to the boat school that's coming up uh, in May. <laughs> if there's no snow, <laughs> and. Uh, and we currently have probably four or five uh, full-time deputies that are trained in okay. full patrol. Right. Like I said, I think we only have one part-time, so that hasn't been an issue either, but we can use part-time deputies on the road and around the boat as well. Jim. I'll make a motion to move it to the snow. Second. Okay, moved by James, seconded by Daryl. There's further discussion in the back by Jed. I, I just had one more question just to get Clear on, I guess. I mean, I think it's a good idea to have the positions in the staffing pattern for agents where we need them, whether it's in this or in the deputies. But, Mr. Treasurer, are these funded ahead of time or are these positions in the staffing pattern? And if we utilize them, we go find money somewhere. The ones he's the new ones he's asking for, the existing SPOs. No, the, the ones he's asking for, like the part time positions that we have. In case of emergencies or whatever, where we need to bring more people in, are those usually fully funded, or or when we utilize them, we go find the money somewhere? So we start the, and Brian can speak to this as well. We start the budget with a certain number that he thinks he's going to use, and it's only if there's some unforeseen things that he'll come back to committee and say, "Look, I I thought there was going to be X and there was Y," but for the most part, he's pretty good at dialing in what he thinks he's going to use. I, I, I was just trying to make sure we weren't creating a bunch of and we're funding a bunch of positions and then not utilizing them as what we were taxing the taxpayer. Right. So like he, he mentioned with his part time deputies that he has now, it's it's one of the few exceptions to if it's in the staffing pattern, you have to fund it. So we don't fully fund all 10 positions because he knows darn well he's not going to use all that's that yep. answers my question. Yep. Okay. But I do usually budget for 10 good for work as well. So we're usually we're <laughs> yeah, usually we're under on that one. Yeah. Any further discussion? Um uh, favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Gary. Can we even bring some more numbers? Oh, you want to say numbers? Well, no, not those numbers. Oh. I meant maybe some more numbers on what you think. Yeah. It's hard. If somebody just fills in for Scott, that would be somebody who did it. Yeah. 
Yeah, right there. Okay. And I printed my cheat sheets up there, uh, black and white printer. So then uh, once I looked at them, I can't see half these numbers. But basically, this is our uh, annual report that we give every year for the Boomer uh, supervisors. Um, and it's very lengthy, so I'm not going to uh, go through with every single page. But if there is something, uh, obviously, on this up on a certain page or look at it, I'll just kind of highlight what it is. And then we post this to the uh, county website, obviously. And then um, we also give each of the supervisors an individual report based on their town uh, with the numbers that you'll see on here that are just report towns. So those will be, uh, and with those are smaller, so you don't have to. We can actually email those, so we'll do that. Uh, this is our mission statement. It's, uh, it's just been the same for a couple of years. We changed it like two years ago. Sorry. Uh, this is a breakdown of our staffing just with the those three divisions, administration, the number that we have there, uh, the number in control, and as you can see, the school uh, resource officer. It, it is confusing. That really is SPO, but that's when they're working for school, we call them SR hosts just because the schools do it, everybody else does. And it's just easier. But the, that is the civil service title we're talking about. Uh, investigations. Got a stolen sign investigator from the town of Houston. It's <laughs> so our organizational chart, and I'm sure you probably can't see that, but I can't. But um, that that basically breaks down, as you can see, uh, just like every organizational chart, the different divisions, administrative, professional standards, control, mm -hmm. investigations, and corrections. And then each one of those boxes has uh, job titles that shows how many people are in each of those spots. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm slow, so you're you're one slide ahead of me now. But your uh, your ratio of uh, supervisors and field staff on, on the ground is one to five, small one to five. Is that what you're aiming at? Well, uh, just for five guys in the field. I would say that's a uh, a good span of control. Well, what's your accreditation? So it's that's not right? that's not a standard for accreditation. Well, it used to be, it used to be one to seven. So we're okay. Well, still so I, I'm old. Maybe it's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. One, but, one but to you, five is good. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm Are you talking excited. first line supervisor, like a sergeant yeah. to deputy? Yeah. 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 So when, when you got five deputies working, there's one sergeant <laughs> wants his five deputies. Uh, well, that's going to change when when we have we have three in the academy right now that are going to graduate. In the summer, uh, and then we'll have seven deputies and a sergeant. But then you also have um, <coughs> during the day shift, for instance, you have a lieutenant and captain. Yeah, right. But uh, but yes, so that that is going to change just for two <laughs> line, which is the day shift, which is our B line, and then the C line, which is our two to twelve. Um, we did add. Just while I'm on this, we did add uh, another shift, 11, 11 to 9, uh, and then we have a shift 5 to 3. So we're using those uh, positions, kind of spread them out throughout the day to cover our, call, our higher call volume time. So um, it's not all 7, for instance, come in at 7 a.m. in the morning. It's, you know, it's spread out throughout the day, and it seems to work out pretty well for us. So it's a big chunk. It's Yeah. Work. Yeah. So at two o'clock, for instance, though, another sergeant comes in. So then you have a person working seven to five. You have, a, you have yeah. two sergeants out two to five. And so okay. yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> it's a boggling answer, but a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, corrections division. 
just some brief notes on that. How many people are booked in? And there's uh, some slides related to that too, as well. Like I said, you can um, peruse those at your leisure. Uh, but it breaks them down uh, pretty well. The following slide is kind of like the slide is telling what's to come. You can see almost 2,000 people pass through the lobby uh, compared to 1,422. And that's one thing that uh, we see when we do things like this is uh, that since bail reform, for instance, uh, the numbers are going back up every year. So uh, it went, they went way down, and now every year they're going back up. This just breaks down uh, gender for uh, inmates. What's your, what's your percentage of... Uh... Occupancy right now, percentage wise. Of How many we have? Uh, yeah. like 60, 60, 65. 65%? No, like uh, just total inmates. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, percentage in terms of capacity, total capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roughly 30%? Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. But the, the one issue with that is, you know, I've talked about it yeah. before, is the state regulations on. On um, how they're held, how you know, sight and sound, and all the different ages and all the different right. uh, dynamics that go into uh, how uh, individuals are incarcerated inside. So, uh, this breaks down uh, by age for 2020 to 2023, and you see uh, 36 to 40 years of age is predominantly, and it's 35 really is. The bottom no, no, it's 36 to 40 is the uh, the highest age group. This just uh, shows uh, most prevalent days of intake by what number of bookings and a half by the days of the week here. And then uh, the most prevalent shift, eight to four, four to 12, or midnight to eight. So obviously, then again, I, I don't have college. Is so, uh, Friday's your most active day? Yeah, thank you. Um, so that just tells you what's not there. These are the top charges. Not surprisingly, criminal contempt is. Uh, one of the biggest charges. And then, uh, unfortunately, it speaks to our, the problem that most counties in the state are experiencing is uh, criminal possession of control substance seven is uh, one of the top charges. And then you can see it goes down. Bless you. Uh, this is admission status. Initial admission, uh, convicted or remanded. <clears throat> Again, you know, this should be on the website. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, repeat offenders, because recidivism is uh, something we want to look at. So uh, we have here 777 repeat offenders account for 3,237 of the bookings. So that there's a percentage there, there are 84 percent of all bookings. And none of these numbers really are surprising, they kind of coincide with crime and uh, what's going on in our state, basically. And this is by court. Obviously, the bigger the, the town, the more people we're going to get from those towns. Carson. These are interesting bail amounts uh, by court. And again, again, based on 
county courts, obviously, the Supreme Court higher, but the charges are more serious. And this is the most uh, prevalent arresting agencies. Is that us? Yes. Thank you. Make sure I'll have this up. Or I'll sit up there. <laughs> Uh, correctional facility books by homeless people that we look at. It's actually kind of steady. Over time. This year should be better. We, two weeks ago, we were fully staffed for the first time since I've been a sheriff, probably long before that. Uh, and nobody around us is fully staffed. Most jails are now double digits for staff. Uh, that's the good thing is we're, well, we lost two. One went to probation and one uh, didn't go, I don't know, where he went, but he left us anyway. So just one day, or else I could come here today and say that we were fully staffed. But so that should help with overtime, but we got we have people that need to be trained this year, and that's what happened in week three as well. Um, you know, when you have new people, you have to train them for a certain amount of time. So, uh, but I think we're have we can do it in house, which is nice, and then we we share with Saratoga and Warren the training responsibility. So if one of us will hold uh, an academy. Uh, each year, so that we try to get as many as we really can. But this year, 24, the number should be better because we have less people to train and we have more people on staff to, so that we don't have to use as much overtime. And that's a, a, that's a tough one to, to figure out uh, anyways. But when, when we're fully staffed, it should be better. Uh, the cap court, the central Oriented park, these are just some facts on that. It's twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Um, that was a huge, a huge uh, thing for us to, we were the second in the state to do this in 2018. Um, and we actually were nominated for an award from the <laughs> Dust Association. Prior to having a cap court, we had to you know, drive all around the county at all times of the day and meet with the DA's office and uh, the public defender and whoever else was going to be the judge, obviously, in these remote areas. It just wasn't a good system. So uh, it's much more efficient and it's much better all there. Uh, so these are cap arraignments, uh, breakdown by agency. Uh, as, as you can see, we're far and above uh, the busiest as far as uh, bringing people to cap court. Do the uh, cap arrangements include the app arrangements also? I'm sorry? Do the cap arrangements also include the app arrangements? No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is time frame. The sea line the afternoon shift is busiest for the cap arrangements. Uh, and then the B line with the uh, the day the day shift of seven to five. And then overnight. Uh, and those would be um, people that are brought in overnight and lodged in our facility. They're not, they're not arraigned overnight. They're arraigned in the morning. So that's just, this is uh, people that are brought in for cap arraignments. So. Meals, the kitchen staff is amazing. They do six, well, in 23, they did 66,812 total jail meals. Uh, that's an increase of 3,000 meals compared to 22. Uh, 96,728 pups for aging meals were served in 2023, and that's an increase of 640 over 23. Uh, so they're they're very busy and they do a great job. And uh, food services uh, director Tony Scarlotta does a great job with the, with the staff back there. They do a lot of events, a lot of senior events, a lot of things like that. Uh, but yeah, 
I really appreciate the work that they do. Pistol permits transactions. Um, you can see in 22, it has a spike there. Um, and it's usually due to national events, to be honest with you. Um, it's the only thing that I can really point to. Uh, but those numbers do fluctuate, but they did go down a little bit in 23. But you just never know. Sure. How do you define a transaction? Uh, so that would be a new permit or an amendment um, to somebody adding your guns or okay. whatever. To, and this breaks down um, the fees, how much was brought in. Yeah, and you can see down there uh, um, it's, Here, yeah. So the fee is something that's collected anyways, regardless of whether you're awarded or permitted or not. So it should be collected. Correct. Yep. And that's the because we're charged a uh, fee, the fingerprint. Sure. Control, yep. It's live scan. It's hooked to the state directly. And, yeah. This breaks down the civil division. They they serve papers and they do evictions uh, and wage wage garnishes and. Uh, as you can see, uh, as well, they're almost a million dollars uh, per year. They they go through that office, or <clears throat> and they do a great job. Sergeant uh, Holcomb runs that along with uh, Hannah Terry on the office. Uh, these slides are related to the patrol division. <clears throat> so time staffing. Um, we had, unfortunately, in 2023, we had some pretty serious cases. We had two shooting deaths. We had numerous uh, serious felony cases that involved a lot of manpower. Um, those numbers hopefully should go down because, again, just like the jail, uh, we're going to be fully staffed once these three deputies come out of the academy. If we haven't been fully staffed. Uh, probably 12 years since that, well, 10 years at least. <clears throat> but a lot of those, like I said, it's hard to figure that number. But when you have two cases like that, even though it's, it doesn't sound like a lot, you, know, you have eight investigators working, you know, eight, but I won't hear this, but you know, 30 plus hours straight, probably. Uh, and then everything that comes after that, you know, people are involved in all the uh, Overdose calls, they're broken down by fatalities, non fatalities. Uh, naloxone, Narcan, distribution, and it has distribution and administering. So it's a response to overdose incidents. Uh, these are just our numbers. They don't include uh, police agencies. We don't really get reports from that. Um, and then we also uh, have how many leave kits behind were issued. That's something new that we started, where if we go to an overdose, we'll leave uh, naloxone kits behind with the family and we'll train them on how to use uh, our game. This breaks down uh, over overdoses by townships. And you see the bigger towns, obviously, like with most of these slides. Um, Kingsbury, whatever, uh, account for the most. <coughs> These are our arrests by gender. Arrest by level, meaning felonies, misdemeanors, violations, and reports. Calls for service by township. And again, uh, the reason for that word is way higher than everybody is because of where our office is located. So it accounts for a lot of uh, activity that goes on there, including you know, transporting inmates and things like that. Um, and then people that come in, walk in complaints at our office, uh, but also any complaints that are generated uh, you know, from our office. So somebody calls in or 
But other than that, oh, and uh, the other reason that went way up is because obviously the town of Fort Edward includes the village of Fort Edward. And uh, so those calls are in there as well. And it's the same for this slide. Uh, the town of Fort Edward now includes uh, the village. So that's why that number is so much higher than the other. Accidents, property damage, and personal injuries. By townships. Activity, activity by the investigations division. Um, it has background checks in there. Um, assist other agencies. Assist the agencies juvenile cases, arrest. Items of evidence of 3,649 items of evidence they've brought in. Specialized units. The peer support response uh, that uh, it just starting to take shape Thanks to the opioid funding. Uh, as you know, we created a sergeant's position and he is in training as we speak. So when he gets out, we'll be able to uh, do more uh, specific things with our, with Sergeant Sullivan, who is uh, fully trained in that, and uh, along with the other people that we have that are trained to offer, to offer officer help. So we certainly had a need for that in this past year, for sure, with the cases that we had. Project Lifesaver continues to be a big uh, positive program that we offer. We have 56 clients, which is, uh, I think, the most that we've had. Um, and that's obviously, if you, if, unless if you don't know that, what that is, is uh, people that are prone to wander, or uh, whether it's adult or, or children, uh, or have some disability where they might wander. Um, we have an RFID device that we tag their uh, shoes or someplace on their clothing. And then deputies are trained with a receiver that they can go out and look for them if they're missing. And uh, it's been very successful. We've actually found people with it. Uh, and it's a peace of mind for the family to know that they have that device. Uh, canine, unfortunately, uh, far left there, Ken Ambrusia this year passed away. Um, Investigator Earl um, was a ferocious handler. Uh, and was, she's a very good, good dog. She was named after uh, Investigator Bruce Hamilton uh, in honor of his name back when Bruce passed away. And uh, yeah, Bruce was a great dog. And she had a lot of good cases. Um, we did just hire a lateral transfer from Rensselaer County to transfer to our office. She is a canine. Officer, she did bring a dog with her, so it's kind of a nice uh, thing for us. Um, and she just finished with an orientation training, so I think she just started like last couple of days being out on her own. Um, so that will be an added. It was actually you know, not an added, but we have the same number of uh, dogs basically. And these are also considered part of our canine. Uh, the top one is uh, strictly explosive detection dog, and that's handler is uh, Sandy Blodges. She's a part-time deputy. She came to us from uh, Rensselaer County as well. Uh, and she, she works with our canine team. She's a master trainer. She has uh, the ability to train our people so we don't have to send them to Albany, for instance, and all that. Uh, and then the bottom one is uh, Taser. You might have seen Taser around the county building, but uh, he is a uh, uh, therapy dog, and uh, Hannah Terrio in our civil division brought that idea to us, and she spends a lot of time over here, uh, spends a uh, time over here with uh, the dog, and uh, it's very well received. It's a lot of the department, especially the DSS, uh, and it actually, you know, I've seen your own men laying on the floor, throwing the ball back and forth with him to, in our office. So it is, it's turned out to be a good thing. Uh, I've never done it. Uh, Marine Division, uh, as you know, we have, we have quite, a, quite a few different bodies of water in uh, the county. Um, and 
every year we try to send more deputies to the school. It's a pretty rigorous training they go through. Uh, it's no joke. Uh, and then the, uh, but we basically use this for, uh, you know, not so much enforcement, but, uh, but they do go out and check the posts to make sure they have the correct safety equipment and things like that. But it's a great public re relations tool to uh, be on the different bodies of water in the county and interact with people that are out, you know, safely voting and talking to them. Uh, this is a joint uh, drone team, basically, with uh, between the Sheriff's Office of Public Safety. And Tim and uh, Todd Lumry from my office uh, kind of oversee everything. And they do uh, a lot of different stuff. And that's been something that's been uh, quite a program. And I know just recently we helped out that with uh, doing the covered bridges in the county. So it's not all about, uh, you know, the law enforcement and public safety side of it. There's a lot of, and Tim obviously, you know, was a lot more about it than I do from, but um, we were able to work with the different county department heads that have requested uh, overviews of different things. And, um, it's, it's just been a great program. And we have had, uh, you know, several occasions where we've used it Public safety and law enforcement uh, capability, but uh, but it's just it's been a great program for us. And thank you, Tim, for working so well with our office. Stonewheel Patrol. We had one day we could have used it. We used it uh, really this year, but you know you never know. But uh, we have that still available. Summer camp, it's the one that we are uh, part of the Sheriff's Association. It's in uh, Yates County. And we send uh, quite a few kids, we send usually about a dozen kids that are otherwise unable to be able to do something like that. Um, we work with Dee Cogan from the county. And she helps us uh, identify kids in need and then send them up. So they were slated to have 18 in Washington County this year. Oh, nice. 18 and then six from Washington. Well, I was going to say 18 probably the highest. Uh, Last year, we had, yeah, but this year it's 24 total for next week. Now. Oh, but yeah, they, other counties keep giving us their spots. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, community outreach, we do a lot of that. Um, these different slides. <laughs> all those with that list, uh, all the different types of community services the sheriff's office supervises. I'll send you a note on. <laughs> okay. Commendations and memorandums. You know, it's very important for us to recognize our employees when they do things that are uh, above and beyond. Actually, tomorrow we're having a, a full patrol side meeting where we're going to issue uh, awards for uh, 2023, uh, including time and service for the county and things like that. Uh, deputies and other members received pins. They wear a uniform, but again, uh, so I think it's a very important thing that we do. Uh, and this list, uh, several incidents uh, throughout the year where uh, deputies have uh, received commendations or memorandums in their files for different events that they have responded to. Can't say enough about the men and women that work in the sheriff's office, that's for sure. And you can see there's quite a few uh, on there, different types of events. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that. These are uh, our accomplishments for 2023. And again, I won't go through all those, but each year we set goals and objectives, which is what we'll do tomorrow with the, with the drill side. And that's an all day. So uh, for those who don't know, that's a schedule overlap. So we have our basically our entire office will be working. So we'll have a full room of uh, people. And what we do is we go through goals and objectives for 2024. And then we look at our accomplishments, which is awarded on this page for 2023. And I think that's you know a very important thing to do to have a, a road map for us. Sheriff, is everybody comfortable with the new rifles and their associated yeah. kit? Yep. Yes, they're uh, I'm pretty sure everybody's going through the training. Uh, everybody, if they don't, they don't have to rifle it. But um, you know, we went through, we had a lot of training 
when we first got them. Um, and then, of course, uh, once it clears up out there, we'll, we'll be out there this summer uh, training if we want to. Uh, yeah, one to that point, um, received a grant from Kerry Warner. Uh, and then we put that together with another uh, funding source that we had, grant money. And we were able to purchase a simulator for our office, and it's in our training room. Yeah. Um, and basically what it is, it's a giant screen, it's a 120 inch screen, I think, and it's like a movie screen. And then uh, what it does is uh, it uses real weapons. So it uses a real Glock pistol, but you take it apart and you put all this uh, laser stuff in it and you change it from obviously the lethal weapons to non lethal weapons. But, uh, it doesn't uh, fire any projectile, but it actually, the slide, works, the action works just like a real pistol, same with the rifles. So the laser actually registers on the screen. And if you have two officers, you can tell which one has which gun. So uh, you can actually use that for, you know, training purposes with a new hire or whatever, because it is that realistic. Um, nothing replaces going to the range and firing, you know, for the mission if they're going to do that. But the thing is, with this system, and I like to have a day, anytime any of you would like to try it, uh, I like that because it, it also has scenarios where, uh, you know, you teach uh, don't shoot, don't shoot type scenarios. And there's a bunch of them that come with the system, but um, with our body cameras, we can create our own scenarios as well. So we actually can come over here to the county building and film inside a building like this where our deputies might actually be and create scenarios where um, you know they have to make a decision on what kind of force you could use. It also works with a taser as well. Uh, but it's interactive, so not to get too deep in it, but uh, you give verbal commands just like you would in a real incident. And then the operator, the operator at the computer, he can respond differently. It's crazy, but he can have the person respond differently that's in the video uh, as to what they do, whether they, you know, they, they go peacefully or they don't. So basically, uh, the nice thing about it is we can film different scenarios in different county buildings. And uh, it's, it's a great piece of uh, equipment to have, especially with de-escalation. And it's not all about shooting, you know, it's, it's kind of more about the opposite. Like, um, you know, you, you go to a domestic situation and then uh, the, you know, somebody produces a a deadly weapon, and whether you would be justified or not, so it's a great learning. Uh, and I think it'd be great for, for you to see it. So maybe we could set up a day, could have supervisors over. Do that. Uh, it's got a couple more here. <laughs> and that's what it comes out. There we go. Uh, this corrections get back. This was something that. Uh, Sergeant Chelsea Little came up with in the jail. That was a great thing. It was uh, uh, duffel bags that were decorated by uh, incarcerated individuals in, uh, inside the facility. Um, and they contained like a teddy bear, blanket, toothbrush, that kind of stuff. And they were uh, completed, donated, distributed. Uh, we continue to do the prom for action drills. Um, and then Bobby Sullivan, again, he's the one that does that. It was a great job, very well received by all the schools in the district. Uh, this slide uh, about the school resource officers and what they do. Uh, social media, as you know, we're big on our social media accounts. We have a lot of followers and uh, it's been a great tool for us. We just had another case where we, and it's not used just for this, but just reminding me, we just had another case where we had an incident, posted a person's, uh, they committed a crime. Most of his picture from surveillance on uh, on Facebook, and he called the next day and said, "Please take that down." It was me. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> that's that's what happens uh, more often than not. Or someone calls and says, and I think we got like ten calls with the, with the public about who it was too. But uh, you know, he recognized himself. So. That's it. And, and that is on the uh, website. Like I said, then we'll have. I'll email the ones. Uh, over, I don't know, I think it's how we did in the past, uh, but we do have individual reports for
Any questions for the sheriff? Okay. You. Thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Are you doing any fine? Fire number. Fire mm -hmm. numbers aren't good. Go ahead. Yes. So yep, go ahead. Thank you very much for speaking us. And uh, we just have two, uh, one fire advisory board appointment, Robert Ladd from the West Fort Ann Volunteer Fire Company. Moved by David, seconded by Jim. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Good. One EMS advisory board appointment, Donna Ray Brown for Argyle Emergency Squad. Moved by Dana, seconded by Jim and Nate. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Three very brief updates, no action required. One, the FEMA flood map uh, meeting will be coming up at community once. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the help of many of you, your lobbying, we did get three community meetings, which we desperately need. Fort Edward, Whitehall, and Salem. We don't have dates other than we know it will be the week of April 15th. We're waiting to hear back on dates. I know Supervisor Clary said this morning that they have received some communication in Salem trying to set up a date there. Uh, I don't know if you've received anything from them yet in Whitehall, but I know they're working on it and it will be that week. As soon as we have the dates, we will push those out publicly. Uh, John. Set up a date for the one year. Okay. Can you get that stuff to me when you know? And then we just have to figure out the one in Whitehall. But obviously, we will look for all of you to help push that information out. Uh, we'll certainly engage our local media partners as well to help get that out. Public attendance will be extremely important for awareness and uh, communication back with FEMA. Uh, the other you all saw last night, just a local briefing coming up for the solar eclipse response. Not that we're expecting any large number of people, but the tourism page did push out some local viewing locations. Uh, so we wanna make sure that our local resources are aware of those. Obviously, we have some concern over what the road conditions may be in some of those areas in a week and a half, based off the newfound uh, arrival of winter. Mm -hmm. Better late than never. And the CEMP update will be coming next month. You all may have seen some recent communication. Uh, we're just gathering some details on that. So we expect to be back next month to talk about that. Any questions for Sam? Does anybody else have any other other they'd like to bring forward? Any other questions for public safety? Then we're adjourned. Yeah. See you guys next month.